So then folks, what I have here is a 2012 MacBook Pro and you may have noticed it looks a bit different. Well, I can tell you now that this 2012 MacBook Pro is running Ventura, the latest version of macOS. And today, I'm going to show you how you can install macOS Ventura, so version 13, onto an unsupported Mac if you follow all the steps that I give you today. It's really quite easy and all you have to do is just listen to every single step in this video and I will show you how it's completely done. Now, just before I get on with all these different steps and where you have to go to download bits and pieces and things like this, there are a few things that you must know. First of all, what I'm going to say is, I take no liability that if you lose any of your data or anything like that while you upgrade to macOS Ventura. What I highly, highly recommend is doing a backup of all your applications and all of your files, photos, videos, everything on your Mac. And the best way to do that is doing a time machine backup. Well, I'll show you a little bit later on where you can do that if you haven't done that right now. If you do have time machine backup, what well, is built right into Mac OS, and this goes back for Mac OS for the last sort of 10, 12 years, then you should have no problems in accessing this and doing a sort of a backup of your machine just in case things go a bit wrong. And plus also after getting Mac OS Ventura on your machine, you'll want to restore everything back. So make sure, please, please, do a backup. Now I'm just gonna put down the MacBook just for a second. Something else that I've got to mention that you need to have, what is definitely worth having if you can do it. If you do have an older Mac right now, so let's say you have a MacBook that's a 2012 model, just like that one there, I would highly recommend upgrading the RAM if you can do it. Don't get me wrong, there are a lot of Macs out there that have sort of their RAM and all their memory and all their sort of SSDs all soldered in. But if you can upgrade the RAM, do so, and I'd recommend having eight gigabytes or more of RAM. This can run on four gigabytes of RAM, Mac OS Ventura, but it might be a bit slow, but I definitely recommend eight gigabytes or more. And also to go along with that, if you do also have a removable hard drive or hard drive that can be taken out, do upgrade it to an SSD hard drive like this. You can pick these up now um, on Amazon for around about $50 for about 128 gigabytes or 256 gigabyte model. Um, so yeah, pick them up. Anyone will do because it'll be faster than one of these, what you probably have in your machine right now. What's a spinny drive, what are far, far slower. These are traditional hard drives. And really you can install Ventura on this, but you will get a very slow experience indeed. So definitely upgrade to a SSD if your machine allows you to do that. And that also leads me on to say that a lot of these machines that you can upgrade to Ventura are only from about 2012 onwards. Now obviously I'm going to show you the full compatibility list like you can see right here and I would recommend going to this website we're going to talk about a little bit further on into this video in showing exactly if your device is definitely compatible to upgrade to Ventura. But as a rule of thumb I would say basically most devices from 2012 onwards can actually run Ventura anything older, really, I'm afraid you can't really run it. So basically, I would say go and watch my other video that I have listed right here, right now, um, and that's to install Monterey, the last version of macOS. And basically, any kind of MacBooks or iMacs from 2008 onwards can run that. But Ventura, at the moment, at the time I'm making this video, is basically 2012 Macs and onwards. So then guys, let's begin then in showing how to install macOS Ventura on an unsupported Mac. Now there's only two things that you need. You need your unsupported Mac, and you also need one of these. You need a USB stick, if I don't drop it here, and it needs to be at least 16 gigabytes in size. It needs to have to be a 16 gigabyte, and it needs to be able to plug into your computer. So if you have a USB normal port, or if you have a USB-C port, depending on what you have, it's got to be compatible with that, and it's got to be at least 16 gigabytes. It doesn't matter if it's USB 2.0 or 3.0. Obviously, if your device has USB 3.0 built into it, and you have a USB 3.0 USB stick, obviously, it's going to be faster to install. But if you have a USB 2.0, that's still fine. It just might be a little bit slower. So with that, guys, let's now head over and show you where you can install the software onto this USB stick and onto your unsupported Mac. So on the Mac that you want to install Ventura onto, all you need to do is open up a browser and then just type into the search like what I've done here at the very top. Type in Open Core Legacy Patcher. Then afterwards, click on this link 
and you'll be taken to the open core legacy patcher and this is the main website what you want to be on after this what you do is click getting started and then after this what we want to do I just want to quickly show you guys over here I'm just going to go over to Mac OS Ventura support here I'm just going to scroll down it's showing that there's hardware what's been dropped Macs that have been dropped uh, because of the new version but here it shows at the moment at the time of making this video the current versions of Macs that work. And as I said at the beginning of the video, basically it's most Macs from 2012 onwards. Most models from then onwards are supported. There will be other models that are older, hopefully in the future, but the time I'm making this video, as you can see here, it's 2012 models only and over basically and also what I just wanted to show you here if I just scroll down a little bit here there are some of these maps that do have to have some extra bits and pieces uh, what you can read through here uh, do, do check this out on this website make sure that your Mac um, is one of these models or not one of these models because uh, there might be some extra steps that you might need to do after you've installed Ventura so do check that out I'm not going to cover them all here today so with that out of the way guys let's now go and download the latest version version of Mac OS uh, Ventura or the open core legacy Ventura uh, patcher. So what we need to do is we just need to go over here and we need to click on download and build Mac OS installers. And then all we need to do is we just need to click here on this blue link at the top. I just move my mouse over. Um, when we click this, we'll get a new tab that has opened, as you can see here. And as you can see here again, we are on version 0.51. This was only seven days ago. This was made at the time of making this video. And again, it's showing the supported Mac models again here. Uh, this version might get updated in the future. Always download the latest version. So if it's say 0.7 or 0.8, or even if it's a 1.2, download that. Also down here again it's just reminding you that 2008 to 2012 Mac Pros and non-metal graphic cards there are some problems at the moment so yeah just be aware of that at the time of making this video. Now the app that we want to download is the one that says app in it as you can see here. Do not download anything else just the one that says app. Click on that and download it and depending on how fast your internet is this will download quite quickly or quite slowly depending but wait for that to complete and with that guys let me now show you you kind of a zoomed out uh, sort of camera of my MacBook Pro. So I just wanted to show you here guys of my MacBook Pro. I just want to show you what version I'm also running. So let me just move my mouse here to the Apple and just click the, oh, the about this Mac. There we go. And as you can see here, I'm running on Mac OS Catalina. And obviously, as you can see here, this is a 2012 MacBook Pro. So it's definitely unsupported from Ventura. And then as you can see, it's 2.5 dual core i5. Uh, my storage, I have two hard drives because I've replaced the uh, CD drive uh, with a uh, SSD so I have my sort of SSD drive and I also have my spinny drive we're going to install everything onto the SSD drive as I described earlier on in the video because this is the faster way to do it so take note of which drive is the SSD if you do have multiple drives in your Mac and also as I mentioned before make sure you also have either 8 gigabytes of RAM preferentially or above it can work on 4 gigs but I've got 10 in here so that's more than enough to make everything work nice and cool so let's close this down and then what I'm going to to do next of all is just remind you guys that you definitely need to do a time machine backup so if you've got time machine or set up do a backup right now if you haven't set it up right now it's quite easy to do look if I go to the preferences here all you need to do is just plug in an external hard drive into a USB port set up a backup do a backup right now before doing any other steps. It's very important you do this uh, because obviously if anything goes wrong, you do have a backup to go back to. So you definitely want that. So with that out of the way, guys, let's move on to the next step and let's actually open up Open Core Legacy that we downloaded earlier. So we just got to click on here and you can see it's bouncing around. It's going to open up. It's just going to verify the app. So this might take a few seconds. Or so, depending on how fast or slow your Mac is. It says it's been downloaded off the internet. Do we want to open it? And uh, yes, we do. It's just a security measure. And in fact, actually, what I'm just going to show you guys, actually, I'll just uh, move this out of the way a second. You might get another message saying you cannot open it whatsoever. And if that's the case, all you need to do is just go to System Preferences. And in Security here and Privacy, there'll be like a message down here to say something's tried to open. Do you want to open it? Just click Yes. You might have to put your password in, uh, but that's about it. 
But anyway, back to Open Core Legacy Patcher. As you can see, this is the main menu. And what we want to do, first of all, is download the latest version of Ventura, because obviously we can't do that just yet. So we want to go down to Create the Mac OS Installer. We want to click on this. And then what we want to do, we want to download the macOS installer. Because this is an unsupported device, we won't be able to download it officially from Apple on the App Store, for example. And here we go, here's the list of different versions. We've got 12.4 version and 13, there we go. Mac OS 13 was Ventura. So we want to set this bottom option. It might be 13.2, 13.1, something like that. Whatever's the latest version of 13 something is what you want to download. Now again, depending on how fast your internet is, this is how quick this is going to take to install. So this is a time where you might want to get yourself a drink or disappear. You can just leave this run. There is no problems with that. And in fact, that is what I'm going to do right now. And I'm going to come back when this is fully downloaded. Once everything has fully downloaded, it's just going to verify that everything is there and has been downloaded correctly. Because, you know, at the end of the day, you don't want a corrupt install. So just let this run too. I'm just going to speed this along this time just to get to the next point. And then what you might have to do is just put your password in on your Mac. I've just got a simple one for demo here. One, two, three, four. That's not my real password, by the way. That's just for the demo of this Mac here. And then basically it will just install this into the applications folder. Once this is completed, what we want to do, we want to get our USB stick ready because as you can see here, it says flash installer. So this is my 16 gigabyte stick. I'm going to plug it into the USB port here on the side of my MacBook Pro and we're not going to click, uh, or click flash installer straight away. We're going to go to the search icon here and what we're going to type in is disk utility. And what we want to do is we want to select disk utility because we want to wipe this USB stick. So if you haven't got anything on it, make sure you back it up as well. So I'm going to go down to it, it's called 16 gigs here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go up here and just click erase as you can see. And it might take a second to notice I'm pressing erase, there we go. And what we want to do is make sure it's Mac OS journaled, as you can see, extended journaled. What it already is, so I'm going to click on that and I'll click erase. And we're just going to let this run. This might take a minute, might take a few seconds, but just let it complete itself. And there we go. It's just erasing. It's mounting the disk. Last few steps. Yep, all done there. So what I want to do is I just want to go up now and just select the done here because it's all completed. And we can now get rid of disk utility because we've done it completely now. So we should still have open core open. And we want to click the flash installer. And then after this, magically, it will tell you that you've got the Mac OS version that you've just downloaded. So you want to select that. And then as you can see here, it's also found my USB stick that I plugged in. My 16 gigabyte one says so 15.5, but it is that one. So what we want to do is we want to select that. And then we just want to leave this again. Oh, actually, sorry, there is a password. So just put your password in for your Mac again. Jump the gun there a little bit and then let this run. Now, as you can see, even as it says here, this may take 30 minutes plus, and that can be the case, uh, depending on how old your Mac is. If you've got like an old Mac like this one here, was a 2012 model, yeah, it might take a bit of a while to complete. If you've got a newer Mac, it might be a bit more quicker. But I'm just gonna leave this run now to fully install onto the USB stick. If it disappears, the USB stick from your desktop, don't worry, it will come back. Just leave this run completely, Go and make yourself another drink or something. So once again, once this is fully completed, what you want to do is get this pop up and you want to click install open core to disk. And then after this, it will run the bits and pieces for open core. And then it will ask you again, the configuration has been finished for open core for your device. Do you want to install this to a disk again? So all we have to just do is click install to disk one more time. And we just let this run. So it's just going to find the disks that we have. Now, this is very important at this stage. We want to install Open Core onto basically our USB stick at the moment. We can switch it over. This is basically the ability to run Ventura when you first turn on your Mac. So you can see we've got all the other sort of disk drives that are showing here. We definitely do not want to install it onto the two main drives at the moment. We want to select our USB sticks. So I'm going to select that and it's going to come up with an EFI with like 200 meg or something. Don't worry, select that. Put in your password again, so it's my one, two, three, four this time, and just let this install. This is basically the ability to boot from the USB stick. 
Uh, and as you can see here, a reboot is needed to do this. Now you can click reboot, but I prefer to actually turn off my Mac completely, then turn it on. So what I'm going to do, I'm gonna click ignore, but you can click reboot if you want to do that. So I'm gonna click it here, come out of this completely, return to the main menu, and then come out of this again. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to restart my Mac, or shut it down completely. Just go and tick that there, and shut down. So I'm just going to let this shut down. I'm just going to move my camera a little bit back as well. And there we go, you've got my full keyboard. As you can see, everything is switched off because I just wanted to show this. Normally you can do a reboot, but I just wanted to show you how everything is done here. So what we have here, we have here the USB stick plugged in, as you can see. The MacBook is switched off from my point of view. I'm going to turn it on, and then we want to hold down the Alt or the Option key on your Mac when you first turn it on. After the dong, as it's doing the dong, hold it down and then you should be able to get this menu come up. If you don't have the menu come up, turn it off and on again and do the same thing again. And what we wanna do, we wanna go over to the EFI boot with the legacy logo, I'm gonna click on that there. And then what we want to do, we want to get over to install macOS Ventura. So I'm gonna click on that and I'm just gonna let this run up to the point now. Sorry, just wriggling my uh, camera back for my MacBook Pro. But once we're on the macOS recovery sort of main menu here, this is your last chance to go back and do a time machine backup if you want to do that, reboot your computer, and look at the previous steps that I talked about in this video if you have skipped ahead. If not, you should have this option. You want to go down to your disk utility at the bottom, and you want to click continue. Like I said, I'd highly recommend going back and doing a time machine backup if you haven't done so already. But anyway, let's select the Mac OS drive. And remember, this is the SSD drive that I showed you earlier on in the video. We don't want to put it on the spinny drive, the 500 gig. We want to put it on the SSD drive, the Mac OS drive. Obviously, if you do have a newer machine with a SSD built in, it doesn't really matter. And what we want to do, we want to erase it, and we want to erase it as an APF. S, as you can see here. So we're just going to let this run a second, and it won't take too long. And once this is all complete, what we want to do is we just want to come out of this, and now we can click Install macOS Ventura. I'm going to click Continue. I'm sorry my screen's wobbling quite a bit. It is an old screen, so it wobbles. I think the hinges are a bit loose, actually. But this might take a second or two. There we go, it has happened. And we're going to click Continue. Yeah, it wobbles every time I click on something, but that's just my screen here. So I'm going to click continue again. Like I said, might take a second or two. There we go. There's this beach ball, as it were. Let's just let that finish. Don't worry if the beach ball appears. It's just checking everything, so nothing to worry about that. There we go. Got the terms and conditions. We're going to click agree, and then what we're going to do is we're going to select macOS, the drive we've just erased, and then after this, we're going to go down to continue and you can tell it is Mac OS, you know, it's got heart, it's got loads of free space on it. And now we just let this run. Now the great thing is we can completely just leave this run totally. We don't have to come back to this until literally the point where it starts asking us what language we need to pick. You do not need to do anything. If it restarts, just leave it. You'll see some black sort of screens and things like this. Don't worry about it. And in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to whiz through them now. And I'm going to disappear and get myself a tea. So for me, this whole process took about 45 minutes. It might be slower or faster for you, but I whizzed through it there for you just to show you, uh, you know, to speed things along. So obviously do pause this video if you do need to do that. So once this is all happening, you should get a white screen where we're about to be ready to do the last few steps to install. Uh, like I said, I do recommend, you know, using a different device to actually uh, watch <laughs> this on. Do not use the Mac um, to um, what you're going to install Ventura onto to actually do these steps. But there we go, we're on the main language page. So let's continue on. So what I'm going to do next, I'm just gonna go down to uh, United Kingdom, like I have done here, my own country, and I'm gonna click continue. And then obviously it's got my languages, I'm gonna click continue again. I don't need any accessibility for me. Uh, what you wanna do next of all is put in your Wi-Fi password. So I'm just gonna cover this up a second. 
And after you put your Wi-Fi in, you'll get your data and privacy. Just click continue on this. Uh, and this is the point now, if you do have a time machine backup, what you can do is you can load your sort of your backup back onto your machine right now if you want to do that the same. If not, what you have to do, you just have to use the search tool in Mac OS and just type in migration assistant and then do your sort of restore them. I'm not going to do it right now, so I'm going to set that up later. And I'm also going to skip signing in with my Apple ID, but you can do that right now if you want to do that. Just because it's a demo, I am skipping it for now. But yeah, I'd highly recommend if you do have that, do do it. Agree to the terms and conditions, it's quite simple. Um, and then obviously you need to make an account name. If you have signed into your iCloud, you might have your name already appear here. Oh, I put my password into the account name there. We don't want that. Let's go put it here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Like I said before, this isn't my password. It's just for demo purposes on this uh, MacBook Pro. So we're going to let this continue. It's going to create the account next. And this might take a minute or a few seconds. And then after that, we want to click enable location services. Click continue on this. And then let's let this just run a second. It's going to turn on sort of the GPS or through the Wi-Fi GPS. Uh, let that complete. And then next door, we've got analytics, share, Mac analytics, app. I'm going to turn this off because it is an unsupported Mac. You can set up screen time if you want to. I'm skipping it. You've got Siri. I'm going to keep it switched on. Use voice number one for me. I'm fine with that. And I'm not going to share my Siri information. Just for my preferences, up to you. And then what I'd highly recommend is select the dark mode. The reason is, is because obviously some patches and things don't really like the light. Um, if you had a version, an older version of Mac OS, you'll probably know about this already. But you can just use the dark mode for now and then install some patches, what are going to happen in a second. It will just speed things up a little bit. So I'm just going to click that and click continue. And you get a blank screen just for a second. Don't worry, your background is going to appear any second. There we go. And we've also got the bar at the bottom. Now, in a second, what's going to happen? A pop-up's going to appear. I'm just going to wait for it to come now. Hmm, doesn't look like it's coming. Let me just click on the install Mac OS, see if it's going to do it. Oh, that, just as I say that, it's appeared. So ignore that. Just be patient. Don't do what I did. Just be patient for this pop-up to appear. So basically, it's going to now tell you it's going to install the sort of sort of booting option off the USB stick onto your main hard drive instead. So it's gonna install a load of patches and it's gonna ask you where to install it onto the disk. So it's gonna show this option again. So it's just gonna load the disks. There we go, you can see the boot options on the disk at the bottom there are USB stick. We don't want it on that anymore. We want it on the SSD drive. What's my Samsung one here at the top? So I'm gonna click that, the EFI there, let that run, put my password in again, one, two, three, four, uh, click enter, and I'm just going to let that install now. So it's, this is, like I said, the ability to boot from the hard drive. It doesn't have to boot from the USB stick anymore. So yeah, it's switching it over. And also at the same time as well, it's put some patches on for my sort of version of MacBook Pro that I have right now. So what we want to do is we just want to sort of just eject our USB stick because we don't need it anymore. In fact, actually, do we? Yeah, we'll, go and, we'll reject it. Yeah, it's gone. And then what I want to do is just click reboot. So we want to reboot your Mac now. And obviously I'm going to tick that, click restart. And I'm going to do a restart. And there we go. It's just restarting now back into Ventura. And it's booted off the hard drive inside. So I'm just going to let this run a little bit. Taking a little bit longer. Probably because it's just the first time. Has it worked? Oh, there we go. And there we are on the main sort of screen there. I'm just going to put in my one, two, three, four one more time for you guys. Might take a second or two to load up. Like I said, this is an old machine. This machine is over 10 years old now. You've got to remember that. It looks a bit battered as well, as you can see in the top corner on the screen. But there we have it. We are fully installed. And just to show you guys, I'm going to go to About This PC. I'm going to go on the Apple logo. Click About This Mac. As it were, not about this PC, about this Mac. And as you can see there, we are on a MacBook Pro. Uh, we are on the 2012 model. And you can see here at the very bottom, it says we're on Mac OS Ventura. Everything, that pop-up's come again. I'm just going to get rid of that. Um, but yeah, there we go. We've got all the about information and everything. 
and we have macOS Ventura fully installed on this machine. Now I do just want to quickly mention to you guys that obviously some software might not work on this, but please do use the comments down below and use the community of YouTube to help you guys along with this. But there we go, that's the main part of macOS Ventura installed onto this MacBook Pro. And there we have it folks. All that's needed was a USB stick and also just your Mac. And you should have now Mac OS installed Ventura, the latest version for 2022 and 2023. If you have had any problems or anything, please do write it down in the comments below. Now myself, I'm not really a full expert if you know if software doesn't work with Ventura or anything like that, but the guys here in the community in the comments are definitely going to help you out. So please do help out if you know like, how to work Office or things like this or certain softwares that are not working for you, please do share it in the comments. I would really, really appreciate it. And with that, guys, as well, it's time to wrap up this video. So if you have enjoyed watching it, please do press the like button. And also at the same time, if you want to hear the latest Apple news, reviews, and comparisons, please make sure you subscribe to this channel and also hit that notification bell. Until next time, guys, I will see you soon. Bye-bye.